A lot of you know that I started using DaVinci Resolve to make my YouTube videos, and I've been doing my best to help other people who are just getting started with the software get a feeling on how to move through it and how to slowly learn how to use it without being overwhelmed. The reason I started using DaVinci Resolve is it's got a ton of features and it has a really great free version that anyone can download that doesn't have quite as many features as the paid version, but it doesn't have any watermark and you can start using it today. Now, in the other video I made, I showed you how to bring footage in and get files set up and do some simple manipulation just to get cuts, simple transitions, and an export figured out so you could make a quick project and get a feel of how the software works. So today I wanna to talk to you about the keyframing feature. I promise you, you can totally handle this and I will make it as simple as possible to get you through it. Now, when we're talking about keyframing, we're really talking about a set of instructions that we're giving to the software to tell it to do very specific things that we want our project to do. Now, sometimes that can be something as simple as just getting your footage to zoom in or zoom back out, or maybe twist the footage or slide it back and forth or up and down. But with DaVinci Resolve, you can keyframe just about anything in your project, including things like the color of your video. Am I looking a little pale? You can also keyframe things in your audio, like the volume level to bring it up and to bring it down. And you can also move that audio left to right and do all sorts of things. But all of these things are based on understanding keyframing as a set of instructions that you're giving the software. So it'll do those things when it plays through. So let's start with some really simple ones, okay? Here I have a piece of footage from my I'm Not a Rockstar video, and basically I was in the shower, Megan grabbed the curtain and ripped it open, and there I was with my phone and the shower head, and I blasted myself in the face. Now this was one of the shots we used, but one of the things I needed it to do was to move into frame with that curtain opening, and I needed it to zoom inward on me so it was a tighter shot, and then I actually bounced the footage to the music. Just so the bills can get paid. I won't take you down that entire path, but I'll show you some of the simple keyframing to get the footage to do those kind of things, okay? If you click on this footage down in your timeline, in the upper right, that inspector opens up. And that's where we can start doing things like modifying the position and the zoom of that piece of footage. But if you look to the right of each one of those instructions, there's all these little dots. Can you see them? Those are your keyframe controls for each one of these things that you're seeing listed up in the inspector. Now I brought the playhead right to where I want that shot to be center frame, full screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up into the upper right, right where it says transform and everything is full screen, I'm gonna click this top red dot. And if you see what happens, all the dots underneath it in that transform section turn red. What I'm telling the software right now is when we get to this point in the footage, I want this just like this, full frame, taking up the whole screen, wide open shot, but I actually wanted to move in from the right into center frame. So I'll go back, grab that playhead and move it back to the beginning of the footage. And there's two things you can do here. You can either add a keyframe first, like I did by clicking in the upper right and then making the adjustment, or you can just start making the adjustment and Resolve will automatically add that keyframe by itself because it's noticing that you already added a keyframe later and you're asking something different right here at the beginning. So once I'm here, what I want this footage to do is come in from the right. And we know that the position X marker is what slides it left and right. So let's slide that by left clicking and holding and moving the footage off to the right. So I'm just left clicking, holding with my mouse and I'm rolling that number to the right and now it's off screen. <laughs> there we go. Now, if I roll my playhead through, watch what happens here. I'm just gonna left click and hold my playhead and just kind of drag it through. See how this comes into frame right here? Boom, that comes right into frame. Now from this point, I'm completely center focused. And here's something that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. If you wanna see where your keyframes are, if there are some already assigned to your video footage, in this case, I can see up in the transition window, see how suddenly all of the keyframes have little arrows to either their left or right? Those little arrows tell you that you have assigned keyframes for each of these functions somewhere in this clip prior to where the playhead currently is. So if I were to go to this top one and click on that upward left arrow, it'll bring me to that closest keyframe before where the playhead was. And that's where I decided to put one to tell it to be full screen. 
Now, if you look, it still has an arrow to the left of these. And if I click it again, it'll take me back to the keyframe where I move the footage completely off screen to the right. So you can now see where those keyframes are here in your footage, and you can use those little arrows to start scrolling through from one to the next. Now, because I'm all the way to the beginning of the footage and the next keyframe happens after it, now notice that there's little arrows to the right. That's saying later on in the footage, Daniel, you already put another keyframe in. And if I use that arrow and click to the right, it'll bring me to that next keyframe. So those are my two keyframes I've made so far, off screen, on screen, and then the software does all the stuff in the middle and moves that footage by itself just by you telling the software where you wanted it to start and where you wanted it to end. Now there's more things I want the footage to do. So let's work on that. I want this to stay here for a minute and then slowly zoom in. So what I'm gonna do is I know I'm on that second keyframe that's telling it, okay, this is full screen. I want it to stay here for a second. So I'm gonna move the playhead forward in my timeline a little bit. And then I'm going to add another keyframe by clicking in the upper right. That's just telling it, stay here for this entire time. This keyframe and the previous keyframe are identical. It's telling it to stay in full frame from the amount of time it took from the previous keyframe to the new one I added. Stay here. But now is where I want it to start zooming in a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll move ahead by grabbing the playhead in my timeline. And let's say around here, I want this to be zoomed into my face. So what I'll do is I'll put the playhead where I want the zoom to stop, and I'll now use the zoom factor, the X in the upper right, I'll left click and scroll to the right a little bit. Now if you look, it's added a keyframe here automatically. I didn't even add the keyframe, I just told Resolve I wanted to do something different. It recognized that, took the instructions I gave it, and then added another keyframe because it knew previously in the footage I had asked it to do something different. So I have a total of four different keyframes now. One that started off screen to the right, the next one that held its center, so it knew to come from the right to center. A little later, I added another keyframe telling it, stay here for that length of time. And then a fourth keyframe saying, now from the previous keyframe to here, I want you to zoom into the amount that Daniel just told it to zoom in. And if you scroll through your timeline, you'll see it do just that. Comes in from the right, holds there for a second, and then starts zooming in until it gets to that second keyframe. And now it will sit there until I tell it to do something else. Or if I don't, it'll just stay there. So that's the basic keyframing right there for a video segment. You're just leaving markers and giving instructions at each of those markers. Now you can do other things instead of just zooming in and moving left and right. You can move up and down, you could spin, you could rotate that footage. But every one of those keyframes is gonna tell the software what you want that footage to do at that point in your timeline in relation to the other keyframes that you may have added. You can do some basic audio keyframing here as well. Now, if I click on the green audio track in my timeline, in the upper right, you'll now see I am in the audio section of the inspector, the inspector that gives us more details about whatever we're clicking on in the timeline. And you can see the volume is just set to be wide open. It's at a 0.0, .0 meaning full volume. I haven't done anything with it, but let's say right about here, I wanted this to get quieter. I still have that audio selected. See the orange line that's going around it. And let's say right about here, I wanted it to go from full volume and start getting quieter. So the thing I would need to do is first add a keyframe to say, okay, you're at full volume. Let's remember that right here. So in the upper right, I'll click volume and it puts a keyframe right there. And then if I wanted it to slowly get quieter for some reason, let's say this was music behind your vocal track that you might've been doing a talking head video and the music came in and then once you started talking, you wanted the music to get quieter. You could do that by using keyframes. So I'll move a little bit ahead. And the minute I do that, you see automatically in the upper right, there's that little arrow that shows up saying, hey, remember you have a keyframe already in this track a little bit before where you have the playhead at now. And let me make one adjustment. I'm just gonna turn the volume down. I'm gonna do it fairly dramatically so you can see what happens here. See how that volume squashes out? And it automatically added that keyframe down in my audio track. You can actually see the two keyframes in the audio track as dots. This one right here is the first one telling it stay this volume all the way up to this point. And then from there to the second keyframe I added, it started turning the volume down. Now you can do things like grabbing those keyframes right inside of your timeline and moving them around a bit. If I thought that faded too quickly, I could left click on it and actually drag it left or right and move it around manually. So you can do it manually down in the timeline and you can fine tune it in the upper right in the inspector. 
And all of these keyframe features have these little reset buttons to the right of them. If I want to reset what I did at any given point, I can just click on those little circular refresh buttons and take them right back to the original thing that I had before I added a keyframe. Now I'm keeping this intentionally basic so all the noobs out there can get started, but if you have any questions about this, please feel free to drop them down below in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. I do try to answer every single question. I hope that was helpful and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.